Well, good morning and welcome here to the chapel again at St. Pascal Vailon Church on the east side of St. Paul. I'm Deacon Richard Moore and I welcome you this morning and thank you for joining me for some time of scripture and prayer and praising God together. Yeah, I know last time I said I wouldn't be in the chapel, but much easier, they're cleaning the church now. They clean it every Monday morning, so I don't want to get in their way. So I'll have to continue doing them from here, which is nice and intimate for me. But welcome, and let us start today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. As we gather today to remember the greatness of God, we also remember that God is all-powerful, yet all-loving and forgiving. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Father, through the obedience of Jesus, your servant and your son, you raised the fallen world. Free us from sin and bring us the joy that lasts forever. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord concerning Israel, his people, I will allure her. I will bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. There she shall respond as in the days of her youth, as in at the time when she came out of the land of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord, you will call me my husband, and no longer will you call me my ball. And I'll take you for my wife forever, and I will take you for my wife in righteousness and in justice in steadfast love and in mercy. I will take you for my wife in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song this morning is from the 145th Psalm. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Every day I'll bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is kind and merciful. One generation shall lodge your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The Lord is kind and merciful. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I shall declare your greatness. I shall, they shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud your righteousness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord is kind and merciful. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Our Savior Jesus Christ has done away with death and brought us to life through the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. While Jesus was speaking to the disciples of John the Baptist, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. 
when Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you might have noticed that uh, <laughs> the translation here in this uh, lectionary I grabbed today, it's an older one we have here, and I noticed it's from the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops. So it's a different translation. I think they uh, go off the uh, Jerusalem Bible, which is, I find actually, when I read it, a lot more poetic and flows better for me, and I think sometimes it does. But the same, regardless of the translation, the thought and the message is always in there the same. I was struck today, and I'm almost struck when Jesus performs some miracles or does some amazing things that people go and proclaim it around the lands. They spread the news that what Jesus has done, and people come and give praise and follow him and are amazed, maybe gawk a bit, see who is this guy? What is he doing? But a lot of them, I, I also think in my mind, a lot of them that actually got to be with Jesus, to see these miracles, to experience them, never came to believe in Jesus. And that's sad. And we could say, well, maybe in this day and age when people can't touch, feel, see the miracles, listen to Jesus in person, we, we cut them slack and say, well, you know, how are they to believe? It's hard enough for us sometimes on our own and our belief in Jesus. But I think there's something around us that like St. Paul always says in his letter, that people know about God instinctively in their heart and the beauty of nature and creation around them speaks to us every day that we look at it and see that beauty and that living organism around us of creation that is the fabric and being of God. The creator God that creates it all and continues to create it all and be alive in that creation speaks to us of countless miracles in that what goes on every day in creation. And we as people of faith see that as a sign of the beautiful God, the awesome energy, a God that is so great and awesome. In theology, we might call that the universal Christ or the cosmic Christ, the presence of God around us every day in God's creation and the people we meet in the animals we see, in the plants we see, a very Franciscan look at the world that Pope Francis told us about his encyclical on the environment. There's such beauty there. And then I think of the psalm today, that we will bless and praise God forever and ever. When we look out and see the beauty of creation, our initial reaction should be one of joy, one of thanking God for this beautiful gift that we get to have every moment of our lives around us. I remember when I was working and I'd be going to work and feel like the weight of the world was on me going into work with all the stuff and meetings I had to go to. In many days, like in the summer, to hear the birds or the animals or in the spring when the crab apples were blooming around 3M. But even on a winter day to look out and see the beauty of the winter landscape would make me pause and remember the beautiful gift that God has given all of us. The gift of creation, the gift of faith, the gift of hope. 
And we're to praise and thank God for that in our lives. Every time we see a beautiful sunset or just flowers like they're blooming right now, to take a moment and think about that beautiful gift God has given us and to thank God from our hearts. A grateful heart is a happy heart, a heart that has hope. Let's take a moment to uh, pray together. That's our job as people of God, is to pray for the world. So let us pray. Lord, we pray for our church, that we can indeed praise and thank God forever for all the beautiful gifts that God has given us, so we can be assigned to the world of God's great love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the, the world in these divisive times that people will come together, the leaders will work together for peace, unity, and justice. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country as we just come from celebrating the 4th of July, that we remember that it's our diversity that makes us such a wonderful place to be, and that we can celebrate and be thankful for that diversity. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those that are sick and suffering in any way, particularly those with mental illness, anxieties, depression, that the Lord Jesus would come in the people that come to help them, that they would know that they are loved, that they are special and there is a hope. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those that have died and gone before us, that they would be in the loving embrace of Christ forever. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we offer these prayers confident that you are listening, and we offer them through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray in confidence the words that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer maybe those that are around us a sign of peace. If nobody's with you, take a moment in, in prayer to pray for peace for those that are special to you. Let's take a moment to, in our hearts, offer a spiritual communion to Jesus. Lord Jesus, I always welcome you into my heart. I know that you are there and you walk with me, that you're always with me. Hearing you in the gospel, seeing you in the people around me, and I know that you are present in those beautiful sacraments of the church. Lord, open my heart to receive your love 
more fully. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, let this offering to the glory of your name purify us and bring us closer to eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you have a, a wonderful and, and beautiful day. Stay cool here in Minnesota. It's a week of hot, muggy weather. Reminds us of summer. Maybe we can complain about that come winter. But anyway, whatever you do today, take a moment to look out and just see the beauty of God all around you. That Christ is surrounding you in so many ways today, showing us how much God loves us and the beautiful gifts that God gives us every single day. Have a great day and be kind to each other.